This is the story of art. Did you know that art was present a long time before language? Mm -hmm, it's true, because people used art to communicate with each other. For example, these paintings were found in caves, which date back to prehistory. So, when was language or writing invented? Around 5,000 years ago, in Mesopotamia, when people invented a form of writing called cuneiform. Basically, it was like reading a lot of different signs. Can you guess where we see more signs in art? That's right, in ancient Egypt. It is known as hieroglyphs and mostly we saw these together with paintings of pharaohs on walls. Did you know the reason why pharaohs are drawn extremely large compared to other people? That was because he was the greatest and the most powerful person in Egypt. Now, have you ever seen those white marble statues? Unfortunately, some of these statues have lost parts, as in hands and even heads. But they weren't originally white. In fact, they were colored. And often, these statues made part of grand temples in Greece. They represented gods and goddesses. Now, the Romans were responsible of making a lot of copies of Greek statues, which were destroyed or lost. The Romans were excellent in building marvellous buildings, such as the Colosseum in Rome. The Romans loved their houses. Wealthy people even had a lot of decorations in their houses, known as mosaic. Mosaic is made from small pieces of stone or glass put together. In Malta, we have the Domus Romana in Rabat, which still has beautiful mosaic floors. As time passed, many people started believing in Jesus Christ. And in terms of art, people started to move away from the classical representation of the Greeks and the Romans. Now, this new type of art was called Byzantine art. Art was now two-dimensional, meaning they didn't look real, and focused more on Christ as the saviour. Gold was very popular, and mosaic was now being stuck to ceilings and not just floors. Just look at the, this image of the Christ in a church in Palermo. Now we move on to the Middle Ages. Now when I say the Middle Ages, it is a very, very long time in history. Well, you could say it's the time of knights and princesses. But we're speaking about art here. If you see paintings of Mary and baby Jesus together, you will think that Jesus is actually an old ugly man. But why is that? Well, artists actually painted Jesus like this for a reason. That's because people believed that Christ was born perfectly as a man. And they couldn't imagine Jesus as a normal baby. After the Middle Ages, there was a period called the Renaissance, which means that people tried to bring back the art found during the Greek and the Roman period. The statue of David by Michelangelo is one of the most famous statues in the world. David looks almost like a superhero, don't you agree? 
even the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci became famous for the landscape in the background. There was a type of art called Manierism, which basic, basically broke all the rules. Just look at this Madonna's neck. How long is it? When the Baroque period arrived, it was all about who had the most money. Well, it was like playing Monopoly, if you know what I mean. And with all this wealth meant that popes could decorate their churches with the best art. Just look at the ceiling painting of the triumph of the name Jesus. It almost looks like that the skies are opening up to heaven. After the Baroque period, there is Neoclassicism and Romanticism, two opposing art styles. Again, Neoclassicism was all about power and looking at the antiquity for ideas. Look at this painting, for example, The Oath of the Horatii by David. The soldiers here are meant to represent Roman soldiers. The Romanticism was more religious and did not agree with all the changes that were happening in the world at the time. So, many of the paintings done represented nature. Look at The Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog by Kaspar David Friedrich. Now comes the modern art period. My favourite part in the history of art. Before this time, artists did not paint outside. They painted in studios. Now, artists had paint tubes available to them. Paint tubes just like we use today. So, they found it easier to go and paint outdoors. These were a group of artists called the Impressionists and they wanted to capture every moment in their picture. Modern art saw artists using a lot of colour to express how they felt, like Van Gogh did. And many went overseas to paint a magical invented world, like Gauguin did when he went to Tahiti. Very fast, art continued to change from the traditional type. And now artists began to focus more on the essentials of art. Think of these as the ingredients you need to paint a picture. Like line, shape, colour, pattern, etc. Artists like Picasso and Braque used a lot of lines in their paintings that they ended up looking like angles. This art was called Cubism and is still popular today. Now, do you want to see something funny? There was a group of artists who were called Dada. It basically meant that they produced art which made completely no sense at all. For example, look at Salvador Dali's paintings. Do they make sense to you? As we enter the mid 20th century, artists used more and more colour in their paintings. Colour was one of the main subjects in art now. You did not see any flowers or pictures of people anymore. Just look at Mark Rothko's paintings. They are just pure colour. And what about art nowadays? Well, art of today is called contemporary art. We have a variety of artists doing different things, but the most important thing now is the 
concept, which simply means the idea behind your work. So, next time you decide to make a drawing or a painting, just take some time to see what it really means to you. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story of art and that you've learned something from it. Bye-bye!